you guys. It's amazing. Hey, I think there's a cable car around here somewhere. Yeah. Hey guys, do you want to go on the cable car together? Let's check it out. Guys, we're on this cable car and it just suddenly stopped. I I was going down the cable car from where we were just at Seoul End Tower and I was going down the cable car and we were going to have this great live stream right in front of the city. They had the uh, Gwangjang Market next to there and in Insadong. We were going to do a live stream right in the center of Seoul and then this cable car I was on just broke down. I mean, of course I have my lesson board and I mean, my, my internet seems to be working fine here, but uh, I, I, guess, I guess we'll have to do the live stream from here in the cable car. Hopefully that's okay with you guys. How are you guys doing? Let's see. I just spent an hour transcribing and it disappeared. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the live stream today. mani padaseo. This is the typical Happy New Year greeting that you'll hear in Korea. Um, it's used at the start of the new year, as well as you'll also hear it around Solar, which is uh, this year it's going to be January 25th. So Solar is also coming up. So you're going to probably hear people say, Sebok Mani Padaseo all the way until the beginning of February. So just expect that. It just Se He is, se is for new, it's an adjective, pure Korean adjective that means new. He means year. Bok means blessings or luck. So like New Year's luck. Mani, a lot. Pata, to receive or to get. So you're telling them, get a lot of New Year's luck. You know, Happy New Year, basically, more, liter more literally. Uh, get lots of luck from the New Year's. Get lots of blessings from the New Year's is what you're telling people. So yeah, it's a really common expression. Uh, one quick thing I want to check is, um, can you guys hear me okay? Is it too loud? Is it too quiet? How does everything sound? Is the audio only coming through your left ear? It's possible. <clears throat> let me check. Oh, Poya S. Let me do this. Let's check Poya S first. One second. Poya S. 229. Poya S is my first donator for every stream. Hold on one second. Let me check for the... Uh, audio Hold on One second. I'm going to see if I can fix this really quick. Hold on. Let's see here. Um, give me, give me just a minute.
Hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how to fix it. I actually, I actually got a new microphone, that's why, but I, I didn't know that it only does one side. So I might have to play with it next time. Yeah, I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure why it's uh, only on one side. Anyone have any ideas? Let me check here. Hold on. Uh, Mike Ox, does this work? Okay, test, test. I think I fixed it. I think we're good. Does this does this sound better now? <laughs> no, it, it, the problem was um, I, I had the settings wrong in uh, my my streaming program. I think it works now. Okay, apologies for that. Sorry, I know that wasted like three three minutes so I could figure it out, but I got it now. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right, thank you, hold music. Okay, back to the lesson. Sorry, that, that took up too much time. Um, I should have checked that before I streamed, but okay, I thought I had everything. I thought I had everything good, but you know, I can't plan everything. I didn't plan this cable car breaking down right over Seoul. You know, I, I was planning something else. So sometimes things just don't work out properly. Anyway, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you again, Poya S. Sorry, I didn't acknowledge your uh, donation before with the microphone issue. <sighs> Poya S is my first donor as always. Welcome to the first stream of 2020, a brand new decade. So um, first thing I wanna say is thank you. First of all, thank you to all of you who have participated in the stream and also thank you to all of the people who have ever donated before. Uh, specifically, I'd like to give a sh uh, shout out to a few donors who really helped, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Ehimang was my first big donor. Ehimang, uh, James Kajok, Thai Tach, and Peter. Um, thanks to you guys and other small donators as well, even Poya S. Uh, I was able to do a lot of changes in this place as of just last week. So you guys didn't see it because I didn't live stream last week. I was doing these changes. What I did was I got a new desk because I've been using the same desk for like six years. Um, and it was like too big and it wouldn't fit in the studio. I got a new chair because my chairs, if you if you saw my Instagram post, my chair is all green duct tape over. It was broken. I got a new bookshelf, which I use for filming and holding all of my Korean books. I also got a new microphone, which is what you're hearing right now. So it wasn't the best to introduce it to you with on your left ear only, but now it should work. But uh, yeah, I got a new microphone. Hopefully this will sound a little bit clearer to you. Um, I'm not sure how much it'll sound different on a live stream. Let me know how it sounds, if it sounds good. Yeah, $300 donation stream, that's right. I think it was like uh, $350 for that one donation stream. And then uh, he did another one, like he did another 100 bucks the next time. So after we got that, um, I was like, okay, I think I gotta, I think I gotta do some upgrades I've been waiting to do for this. So I haven't, I haven't upgraded everything. You know, I could still upgrade, you know, our, our the camera or some other things, but I really wanted to take care of a few of those things first. Also, um, I reorganized my whole room. So that's something else you guys will not see, but the, my closet was just a mess. Everything I ever owned was inside of there. Um, and I went through all of it. Uh, my wife helped a lot. We went through everything one at a time put it all into nice boxes, organized it. So now I can actually find stuff. So that will help with my videos in the future. And another announcement is I also will get, I'm going to uh, improve the audio quality further. Maybe if everything goes well by next Sunday, if not by the next Sunday, I'm making some, uh, building some cheap, well cheap, but cause I'm building them. I'm making some audio panels, which should help the sound in this 
room even further. So some more upgrades coming soon. That's all thanks to you guys. I just want to say thank you to all those of you who donate, all of those, all of those of you who have donated as well as uh, big and small donations. Oh, and speaking of donations, oh, new member, Gabriella. Gabriella, welcome. Got a new member, welcome. And because we got 50 members now, we actually, actually now I think we have 51. Because we have 50 members, we got a new emoticon also. So uh, I know you guys wanted a Charsu emoticon and some of you asked for a mind blown emoticon. So I put it together. So we got a Charsu mind blown emoticon. And if you come into the Discord chat, you can also see that emoticon animates. So it's an, actually an animated emoji that I made, but uh, it doesn't animate in YouTube because YouTube doesn't want to do that. But yeah, you can see the new emoticon. Yes, I see Ameriliz is using it. It's supposed to be kind of like the, the Tim and Eric sketch for the universe, like having his mind blown. But anyway, yeah, that, that's Charsu in case you're curious. That's uh, how Korean people know the name Charsu is that character. Okay, uh, the other quick announcement, I should have already started, but we're, we'll start a couple minutes late, but it's okay. The other announcement I wanted to say is to make sure to go on uh, Patreon. If you're a Patreon supporter, even the $1 Patreon supporter, you have access to every single outline I've ever done for a live stream, as well as um, worksheets. So I do worksheets for the live streams as well. I started a few months ago, so there's a lot of those too. Uh, you can fill it out right now while you're doing the stream. There's about 10 extra translation examples that you can do on there. So that's all the announcements for today. Thank you again. Uh, really quick, prerequisites for today's lesson, since it is an intermediate level lesson. You need to be intermediate level. By that, I don't mean you need to be a master, but you need to be, you need to have basic Korean already good. You need to feel really good about that already. You should have all beginning stuff uh, without any issues. So that means, specifically, you should also be totally familiar with the har su ita, su ita, su opta forms, so can and can't, the negative forms, so ji an ta, for example, Hagi wihe, or just wihe, in order to, as well as ke hada, letting and making. If these forms, if any of these forms are kind of new to you, uh, then this lesson will be above your pay grade because it is really an intermediate level lesson. So I want to let you know that. So if you're if you don't understand parts of today's lesson, um, it is made for intermediate learners. But don't worry. As soon as you get to intermediate level, this will all make more sense. So just giving a disclaimer there. Also got some new erasers. I've had some bad luck with ordering erasers. I've made six or eraser orders, and of those, three of them never got delivered. They just disappeared in the mail. So I or everything else I get, just erasers. I've had bad luck with three eraser orders, like th where I ordered a big bag of them because I didn't get the last order. So I ordered a big bag from a different seller. They didn't arrive either two months later. So it's hard to get erasers, but I think next time I buy erasers, I'm just gonna buy them on Amazon because they're, they're hard to get. <laughs> I'm tired of losing erasers in the mail. So uh, yes, really quick again, welcome everyone. Let me just see who's here. Make sure I acknowledge everyone. Small, oh, Zilly, uh, Zilly, hey. I, would, I, I almost said hi to Nightbot and then I remembered, uh, yeah. <laughs> Nightbot doesn't do it, but Nightbot is not alive. None your business, welcome. Uh, girl next door, Jordy, Ameriliz, of course. Uh, let's see who else is here. So that my members are here. Uh, if you say something, I'll see you. <laughs> Eraser Mafia. Yeah, I swear someone must be uh, small. Hey, small. Someone must be like going through my mail and like they'll see like they'll be like, oh, brand new, brand new three hundred dollar microphone. Nah, I don't need that. Oh, what's this? Billy got a new light. Nah, I don't need that. Erasers. This is what I'm gonna. Erasers like the mailman, like you know, putting them in their pocket. Like that. That's got to be what's going on. I swear, it's got to be that. I don't know. It's just weird. It's so random. And like, it it almost, actually, I said three. It's actually four. It's been four because I did another small order that also disappeared. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like, why, what's it with getting erasers ordered from eBay? They just disappear. So I don't know. Has anyone else had the same issue? I, I, everything else I'll order like, you know, like a little USB charger or I'll order other equipment. And they all, it all comes fine. Just not erasers. I don't know. Okay, so today we're going to be learning about the form Toro. And this is a very uh, versatile form. You'll see many different uses of Toro. We're going to be talking about all of them today. 
Yes, all of them. Okay, I'm actually already a few minutes behind, but that's okay. Toro. The first way we're going to talk about is how toro means so that. So that. When I mean so that, when I say so that, what I mean is I can do it. Um, let's see. Let's think, think, of, think of a new example. Um, I studied a lot of Korean so that I could be a Korean teacher. You can also think of this as translating as in order to. In order to also works fine, which some of you might already be thinking, well, Billy, in order to, that's that's wihe, right? Hagi wihe, like hagi wihe. Well, what's the difference between hagi wihe and then this total form? We'll talk about that a little bit later, so don't worry. Just kind of uh, put that on the back burner. Think about it for a little bit, but we will go over that too. So this can translate as this can translate as so that or in order to. Either one, whichever one fits uh, the translation for your sentence. Now, the reason I think, let me say this, so that is a much better translation for this usage. There are actually two completely different uses for total, actually three, but two major differences for total that we're gonna talk about today. The first one means so that. I want you to think of this as meaning so that more than in order to. The reason is this word total actually has the same literal meaning as ke. Now, who is familiar with k? Think about k. I don't mean like uh, k like a crab, k. I mean k as in k hada. For example, hage hada, hage mandirda. If you remember those forms for make and let, k. K also means literally, we talked about this during the live stream, so that. K also means so that. When you are saying hage hesoyo, Chersuga Tongso Hage Hisoyo. I made or someone made or let Chersu do the cleaning. Chersuga Tongso Hage Hisoyo. When you're saying Tongso Hage, you're saying so that Chersu does Tongso. So that Chersu does cleaning. Hisoyo. I did it. Or Mandrosoyo. I made it. Literally, Chersuga Tongso Hage Hisoyo or Tongso Hage Mandrosoyo means I made it so that. Charsu did the cleaning. And we talked about this during the make and let live stream. So that's the literal meaning of K. Torok has the same literal meaning when it's used in that manner. It can mean the exact same thing as K, which is why you already need to be familiar with K Hada or else this might be a whole new concept for you. Um, but you, you would be familiar with K Hada if you're intermediate though. Okay. However, you might be then wondering, well, what's the difference between using Torokada, for example, I made someone do something, or kehada, I made someone do something. There is a slight difference. The difference is that torok is slightly more formal if you're choosing between them. So I haven't really showed you yet how to conjugate it, so let me just write that up really quick. It actually conjugates very simply. All you do is you take a verb stem and you attach torok, and then you finish the rest of the sentence. So you get so that verb stem, right? Or you can think of it as in order to verb. So in order to go, in order to become a Korean teacher, I learned lots of Korean. In order to, you can say it with torok, or you can also do it with k in the exact same way, verb stem plus k. So in this context, in this usage, torok has the exact same meaning as k to mean so that, or in order to. It's not interchangeable with K though, just in this usage it is. So you actually can exchange K for torok whenever it's being used to mean so that. I'll leave this up for a second before I write our first sentence down on the board. K-pop idols say torok. Yes, K-pop idols will say many formal or um, written words. So there is a lot of Korean that's only used or uh, yeah, there is some Korean that's only used in writing or like formal writing or poetry. Uh, you know, kude, kude meaning you, is never actually spoken. It's only used in formal writing applications. So singers will say kude. You know, I actually did a video about this before. Uh, there's a few verbs that Koreans will only use in songs. 
Toro is also commonly used in songs, but that doesn't mean it's, in this case, it doesn't mean it's only used in songs. But if we're comparing Toro form with K form, it's that you should know that Toro is tiny bit, Toro is a tiny bit more formal than K. Okay, so let's do our first example sentence. Once again, if you've never seen K before, then uh, this might be a bit more difficult. I think you probably could still follow it though, if, as long as you understand that Toro means so that. But if you already know K hada, it, this will make things easier. So, first example sentence. Kamgi e kolida means to get a cold. Kamgi e kolidi an ta, to not get a cold. So, kamgi e kolidi an toro. Now, I should note that due to sound change rules, this becomes pronounced as an toro. An toro, because we have a hiat before a base consonant. So, Kamgie Koliji an Toro. I spend so much time writing these example sentences. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I spend like two hours coming up with example sentences like during the week. Oops, cool, not cool. Cool. And then I'll like uh then I'll like arrange them to be like in a good order. Manjiji baseo. So manjiji baseo means do not touch. Ipwa ku mouth and nose. Manjiji baseo. So don't touch your mouth and nose so that you do not get a cold. Kamgie koliji an toro. Ipwa koder manjiji baseo. Kamgie koliji an toro. Ipwa koder manjiji baseo. Don't touch your mouth and your nose so that you don't get a cold. Or in order to not get a cold. Kamgie koliji an toro. Like that. Okay. And there are actually a lot more example sentences I came up with, but those are all on the worksheet. So if you're feeling like after the lesson, if you still feel like kind of uncomfortable with the form, I definitely recommend checking those out. Hangu goder. Kongbu. Hai. Oops, that's wrote that a little messy. I always have to remember like you guys are not native Koreans so I have to write nicely so it can be more legible. In fact, or su is a very common usage oops, is a very common uh, grammar form that you'll see with this torok form. You'll see su used all the time. It doesn't mean that it has to come together with suita or anything, but you just tend to see these types of usages more often. Um, the prerequisites I gave you are the most common places that you'll see it. Suita, ji anta, as well as uh, ke, like used as ke hada, like to make someone do something. Ke hada instead, torok hada instead of that. Okay, har su itorok. So, hangoro kungwa har su itorok. In order to, so that I can study Korean. I can study so that I can study or in order to I can study you know it doesn't it doesn't sound quite as good that way but so that I can study Korean well what so that you can study Korean Hangugo so again we have Korean Korean language tech Hangugo tegger tasoyo. In order to, or so that I can study Korean, Hangugo Tech Korean language book, Tassoyo. I bought a Korean book so that I can study Korean. Hangugo Tech Korean language book, All right. So I'm just going, I was going a little bit faster in the beginning because I lost a like five minutes messing around with the microphone settings. <laughs> but it's okay, next time we won't have that issue. Okay, uh, and now we are back on track. Okay, let's do one more sentence and then I want to give you guys something to do. Uh, so next year, 내년, 한국 여행, Korea trip. So a Korea trip next year, 여행을 충분히 충분하다 means to be sufficient to be sufficient or to be enough 
So, 충분하게. Now, we learned about K also as an adverb, a way to change a descriptive verb into an adverb. You should know this as well for intermediates, but really quickly, I'll give it a, a review, not a review. I'll give a, a tip in case you didn't come to that live stream. This K here is how descriptive verbs can turn into adverbs, one of the ways. This K also means the exact same thing as K in other situations. So that. So that it is sufficient is what it literally means. In English, we would just say sufficiently, right? Like enough. I bought enough. It is sufficiently entertaining, right? 충분하게. Uh, sorry, actually, I'm going to use 충분히. Uh, but it's the same thing for, for literal meaning. 충분히. Sufficiently, or so that it is enough. So, 여행을 충분히 즐기다. 즐기다 means to enjoy. 즐기다. So, use this. 즐길 수. Here we have, here we have again. 수 있도록. So, now we have 내년에 한국 여행을 충분히 즐길 수 있도록. So that I can enjoy, sufficiently enjoy enough, completely, you can translate it as, you know, really fully, un, fully enjoy a Korea trip next year. So, so that I can fully enjoy my Korea trip next year, so that I can have a great time on my Korea trip next year, would be a more natural, you know, regular translation for this. So then what would you do in order to sufficiently enjoy your Korea trip next year? Well... 지금부터, from now, 지금 now,부터, from, 돈, money, okay, well, you're, you're going to be saving up your money, 돈을 모으다, 모으다 means to save, to uh, gather, literally, to collect or to gather, but if that's how they say to save your money, like, as in not using it at all, like saving it up, there's different word for saving, like, I, I want to save my money, I don't want to spend it on that, that's a different save, this is just saving up your money as in collecting your money, 돈을 모으기, and then the ending, 시작하세요, so begin, saving up, or saving money from now, so that you can enjoy completely, Sufficiently, Korea trip next year. 내년에 한국 여행을 충분히 즐길 수 있도록 지금부터 돈을 모으기 시작하세요. Start saving up your money from now so that you can enjoy fully your Korea trip next year. All right. I'm going to take a one minute break and I'm going to check the chat room to make sure we're all doing okay. I hope I'm not going, is it, is it like too fast or is it okay? Let me know. Clara asks, can 지금부터 be interchangeable with 이제? Yes, 이제 literally means from now. It does not just mean now, so it's from now. Although a translation for 이제 is most often just now. I think in, in general, yes, they both mean from now. However, if you say 이제, you're not emphasizing, you're, it's not as much emphasis on from now and in the future. 지금부터, 지금, right now, 부터, from right now, 이제, from now. So it's a little more emphasis if you say 지금부터. It's like from, like right now and right now, and from right now, it's kind of like more emphasis on right now as well as in the future, whereas 이제 is just more emphasis on like now, including the future. So it's just an emphasis difference. I would say if you want to say from now in English, say 지금부터. Don't say 이제. If you just want to say now in English, use 이제 or 지금 depending on which one you would mean. Oh, Vex, Vexil. Vexil. How, how do I pronounce it? V-X-H-Y-L. X-H-Y-L. Thanks, Vexil. Let me give you a dab. Dab for Vexil. Thank you. This regular day, really fast. Um, if you are a, uh, let me know your level, this regular day. The first donor asked a question. 
Oh, really? Sorry. Uh, uh, I don't see it now. It, it deleted off the chat. Poya S, can you, Poya S, can you ask me again? I think you're right. Oh, that's right. You asked about Topic. You asked something about Topic books. I can't recommend you any Topic books though, because the only Topic books I have are old. They're old now. The, these these expired because I bought them with the intent with the intention of taking the topic test and then the next year uh, they ne the the books expired. I think this was when I had my kid. Was this 2005? Yeah, I think this was the year right before I had my kid, so I didn't get to and I was going to study it the next year, but then they changed the topic, so these books expired. Um these are really good series though. So you could probably get the same series. They have all levels. So they, this one is a topic. It's a series. And uh, this one's a different series. This one's just from uh, Topic. The actual Topic organization, I believe, puts out this book. You can just find it pretty much at any store. It's called Topic. Uh, this is like the official practice books, like practice questions of the test. And then this one's more of a... Uh, like a guide kind of where it'll give practice questions with like explanations and uh, kind of stuff like that. But uh, yeah, they're, they're both pretty good. Although I would get more books if I were to do the topic now. Like you don't just want books with practicing the topic. You also want to get books about vocabulary. Okay, back to the lesson. Apologies for missing your question, Poya S. That's right. I think that was like right with the microphone and uh, that I got distracted by the donation. <clears throat> uh, Ichi Droid, what's the difference between in order to? We will do that in the lesson today. That's I said that in the beginning, so just, just wait on that. We'll get to that, I promise. Okay, next example sentence. Okay. Modu. Modu. Everyone or all. Could mean all, like everything. But here it's going to mean everyone. Modu ka ta. So that everyone, all, everyone, ta, every person. Modu ga ta. su itoro. Notice su itoro comes up a lot. You'll, you'll see that. It's not that I'm purposely making sentences that use su itoro. I'm just making regular sentences that would sound natural in Korean, and Koreans tend to use certain forms very frequently with torok. It doesn't mean you have to use these forms with torok. It's just how it tends to get used. So that everyone can hear it. So that everyone can hear it, well, what's gonna what's gonna happen? Kuge, kuge, loud. This is the adverb form of kuda to be big. But when you say kuda for a sound or someone's voice. When you say someone's voice or a sound is is big, what you're actually saying is that they are loud. So, kuge malhada means to speak loudly. Kuge, and here also is the k. So that it is big. So that it is loud. Speak so that it is loud. Malhe juseyo. Please speak Literally, kuke, so that it is loud, or please speak loud. Please speak loudly. You know, this would just translate as loudly in your book, but it literally means kuke, so that it is loud, so that everyone can hear, right? So these are both the same literal meanings. Um, however, you're not going to use toro to make a descriptive verb into a adverb, in case you're curious. You're not going to say kudorok like that. Um, literally, I suppose you could, but they, they don't do that. Adverbs are not made that way. So that everyone can hear. Please speak loudly so that everyone can hear you. Okay, next. Um... Let's see, how are we on time? Okay. Dang it, I wrote, I put too many sentences. Okay, next we have another meaning of torok. So that was our first meaning, which, which translated as so that. Well, this is the actual 
actual literal meaning of torok. But it's not as easy to translate with this. To the extent that. To the extent that. Like so much that. Or that amount that. To the extent. What extent? You know, what amount? To the amount that. To the extent that. Um, you'll also see this translated, although this is not a literal translation, as until. Until. You can think about it as until. As in... Um, <clears throat> to the extent that, like, I listened to that song to the extent that I hated it. I listened to that song until I hated it. That's the, we, that's the way that this can sometimes translate as until, but literally it doesn't have anything to do with until as in, like, time. It's just more of to the extent that. So that is actually the same meaning as to the extent that in every case. So if you're saying... I bought a Korean book so that I can learn Korean. You, what you're saying also is I bought a Korean book to the extent that, literally, which doesn't make much sense in English. I bought a Korean book to the extent that I can, you know, I bought, I bought it to the extent that I can study Korean. So it sounds kind of awkward. So I don't really recommend just learning this. I recommend learning both so that and to the extent that. Or until will be a good translation. So this is our second meaning of total. And I'm going to give you an example to show you what I mean. Of course. I always give you guys examples. Let's see, how many people are here? We have 133 people. That's great. Okay. This is, um, for this usage of total, I actually, I actually recommend that you just memorize exactly which verbs it's used with. Because if you try to use this with other verbs on your own, you might not sound natural. Um, this is used with a handful of specific verbs. So literally, you can use this with lots of verbs, but most often you'll see this with some of the same verbs over and over and over again. So I'm going to give you all of those verbs in sentences today. So if you see, if you know all of these, actually, let's see, one, two, three, four. Um, Five, yeah, four, four or so verbs. I think there's a couple more in the worksheet. About four or so verbs that use this form in this manner to mean to the extent that. That's it. You'll be good for most of the cases that you'll see it used like this. So, ku nore. So, that song, ku nore er, jildida. Jildida means to get bored of something. Jildi torok. So that you get bored of the song. Yeah, to the extent that you get bored. To the extent or even so much that, you know, so much that also sounds OK, too. But to the extent that is more of a trustworthy literal translation, I think. So, yeah, you can write down so much that. So much that I got sick of the song. What did you do? Trossoyo. 그 노래를 질리도록 들었어요. I listened to that song. 그 노래를 들었, 들었어요. I listened to that song. 질리도록. To the extent that I got sick of it. 질리다. To get sick of or to get annoyed by. So much that I got sick of it. 그 노래를 질리도록 들었어요. I listened to that song so much that I got tired of it. Right? You know, um... Everyone knows, like, you know, the songs that come on the radio and they go every single day. What was it? I think it was, like, I remember, like, 2010. I think Soul Sister was on the radio, like, five or six times every day when I was driving to work. Like, twice on the way to work and then, again, once maybe on the way back or once going out in the evening. Yeah. Okay. So, 그 노래를 질리도록 들었어요. 질리도록 is a very common usage of 도록 with this form. 질리도록. So, definitely learn. Oops. Definitely learn 질리다. To get tired of something. 질리다. Okay, and the next one you'll often see it with. 눈이, so 눈, eyes. 빠지도록. 
빠지다. 빠지다 means to come out. Pop. Your eyes come out. 눈이 빠지도록. Well, in Korean, they say that your eyes come out when you're waiting for something for a long time. You're waiting and you're looking, you're like this, waiting for something to happen so much that your eyes just come out, come out of your face. That's what they say in Korean. 눈이 빠지다. Your eyes came out. Well, 눈이 빠지도록. So much that your eyes came out of your sockets. So much that, let's go write that over here. Okay, so much that your eyes come out. And then they use it as 기다리다. 기다리다. To wait so much that your eyes come out. Like you're sick of waiting. You're, you've been waiting forever is how they would say it in Korean. So I waited just so long. We waited forever for BTS to arrive. You know, we waited forever for you. So 눈 빠지도록 for our sentence. 기다렸어요. 눈이 빠지도록 기다렸어요. 눈이 빠지도록 기다렸어요. I waited so much that my eyes came out. You know, I waited forever. Literally forever I was waiting. That's how you would say this in Korean. And it's a fun expression. 눈이 빠지다. So I definitely recommend one. Try to incorporate this into your conversations. 눈이 빠지도록 기다렸어요. When maybe you're, you're messaging your friend and they don't reply and then they... You know, they're late for their appointment. They finally come like 30 minutes late for when you're supposed to meet. You say, I said, 눈이 빠지도록 기다렸거든. I was waiting like so much, like my eyes were coming out. You know, you can kind of tease them that way uh, if you want. Okay, uh, next example. Uh, let's try to put BTS in here. BTS를 춥도록, 춥다. So what is 춥다? What is 춥다? Of course, 춥다 to die. So, so much that I die. Now this is an, um, this is a exaggeration. So this is a hyperbole for saying <clears throat> so much that you could die. 죽도록 파랑하다 is how you express you love someone to death. This is where uh, you might think of the translation until, until I die, I will love BTS. You can also think of it as until, Though, just know the literal translation is more like so much that I die, or even to death. I love them to death. 죽도록 사랑해요. 죽도록 사랑하다 is how you say to love something to death. You just love it to, you know, to death means that until you die. To death. Make sure I'm just checking how far I'm getting here and the time. Okay. How am I so far behind on time? I'm trying to, I'm even trying to go fast. Okay. 죽도록 사랑해요. BTS를 죽도록 사랑해요. I love BTS to death. Now, I don't. I'm not a, I'm not a huge K-pop fan. But some of you probably will want to use this sentence. 죽도록 사랑해요 means I love them so much that I die. Right? And finally, our fourth way that you'll commonly hear this uh, expression used is 지나다. 지나, 지나다 means to pass. Uh, it can mean like the, you know, someone passed by our building or that time has passed. It's often used for like time passing. It just means to pass, like to go by, to pass. 지나도록 is another way that you'll commonly see this. 집 주인. 주인 means the owner. So the 집 주인 would be like the house owner, the home owner. So if you're renting a house, you would have the actual chip chewing who owns the house and you're just renting it. So the chip chewing would be kind of like, kind of like your landlord would be how they'd call a landlord in Korean as chip chewing since they're the owner, you know, so that the landlord chip chewing there. 2년, so two years. 이 지나도록. So it's also used with 지나다 commonly. 지나도록. So much that. So much that here, though, doesn't seem to be the best translation. So much that two years passes. Doesn't really seem very natural. To the extent that. Actually works, works pretty good here. Or maybe until. Until two years has passed. Maybe. You know, pick whichever one you think works best. To the extent that two years has passed. And then torok. So we need something after here. You're not just going to end a sentence with torok. So... 
2년이 지나도록 못 보다. So I have not seen. 못 봤어요. 집 주인을 2년이 지나도록 못 봤어요. 집 주인을 2년이 지나도록 못 봤어요. I have not seen, literally, 못 보다, to be unable to see. So I could not see the homeowner so much that, or to the extent that two years has passed. So I haven't even seen them and it's been two years. Oh, I got a donation. Dizzy Punch Gaming. Dizzy Punch Gaming. Hey Billy, first time Patreon. On the second level of Talk To Me In Korean. What level is that for your videos? Oh, Dizzy Punch Gaming, thank you. Dizzy Punch. Dizzy Punch Gaming. Thank you. Uh, let me give you a dab and uh, answer your question. Um, for... Thank you, let me check really quick because I actually, let me just see what they have. Let's see, level two. Less than 14. Oh, that's still the beginner. That's still the beginner stuff. If you're on level second level of talk to me in Korean, uh, looks like they do op, they do markers, all this stuff. Um, my videos are not in any order. My videos are not in any order because I actually upload most of my videos based on requests from people. So when I first started my channel, I think some of my requests were like intermediate topics or uh, some beginner topics. So they're not in any order. My books are in order. Uh, but that level two would still be within the con within the confines of book one. So that would all still be book one, in case you're curious. Um, not the work, not the uh, book two or three or the reading book or anything else like that. So yeah, book one and uh, a companion to that would also be the uh, book I did with Talk to Me in Korean, the one that I wrote, uh, Common Mistakes Korean Learners Make, which is available through Talk to Me in Korean. That one's kind of for every level. So that one would be okay too. Other than that, book one, but you'd have to search my individual lessons for each topic you're doing. Ah. Okay. That was the numeral two. Oh, did I? <clears throat> oh yeah, you thought it was k? Yeah, it's not k. That would be, that would be bad. Um, I won't I won't teach you any swear words on my channel ever. I'll just say this word. If you don't use it with a number is a swear word. That's all I'll say. So be careful. But yeah, 2년. 2년이 지나도록 so much that or to the extent that two years has passed. So I haven't seen him. I literally, I could not see him. 못 봤어요. I couldn't see the homeowner. I couldn't see the landlord. And it's been two years. Or more naturally, you might just say, it's been two years. Two years has passed since I've seen the landlord. Two years has passed. Kind of like saying it like that. You could say it differently. You could just say, it's been two years. You can just say it more literally. It's been two years since I've seen the landlord. But this is more of a way to say, like, two years has passed since I've seen the landlord. And it's also kind of emphasizing that it's even been like, wow, two years has passed. You're not just saying, oh, yeah, I haven't seen them in two years, right? Because there could be a legitimate reason for that. But now you're kind of emphasizing like, no, it's been a full it's two years. I haven't seen them. It's been two years. Kind of like that. So that's what Toro can do. Like so much that to the extent that two years has passed. It's been full two years. Kind of like that. So it has more emphasis than just saying the regular like, I haven't seen them in two years. You know, 본지 오래되다. Kind of like that. 본지 인연이 되다. Okay. Now remember how I told you <clears throat> that you can use toro in the same way as you can as you can use k and that literally it even has the exact same meaning even well even when it's used with adverbs it can have the exact same meaning so i wanted to give you an example of that tega ihe hadorok uh actually let's do this let's change this i'll make this a little bit longer i think it's too short okay ihe hagi Let's do this first. 이해하기 쉽게 설명해 설명해 드릴게요. 설명해 드리다. I will explain it to you. This is humble, so you're being polite. 설명해 드릴게요. I will explain it to you. 쉽게 이해하기 Oops. I spelled that wrong. 쉽게 이해하기 쉽게 
설명해 드릴게요. 제가 I 이해하기 쉽다. Easy to understand. 이해하다. To understand. 이해하기. Understanding. 쉽다. To be easy. So easy to understand. 이해하기 쉽게. Easily to understand. Or, remember I said K means so that. So that it is easy to understand. 설명해 드릴게요. I will explain it to you so that it is easy to understand. So this is our regular sentence. This doesn't use total. But, like I said, total has the exact same meaning as K. Literally. Oops, now I'm like doing it all out of order. 쉽도록. 제가 이해하기 쉽도록 설명해 드릴게요. I will explain it to you, again, so that, or to the extent that, so much that, whatever you need to translate it as, so that it is easy to understand. 제가 이해하기 쉽도록 설명해 드릴게요. Exactly the same. The only difference, as I said, would that is that Torok would be slightly more formal sounding than K, but they have the same meaning. So that, to that extent, you know, that much, so much that, like that. That's what K and Torok share in common. So much that you can just swap them out. Um, in fact, oh yeah, before we go on to the next form, which is Torokada. Warning, I might have cussed eggs accidentally. Um, yeah, you have to be careful. Oh, someone asked, is Chengdo similar to this um, expression? It can be, but you'd have to use it differently. If, really quick, I'm not going to explain this for today's lesson. Chengdo literally means, so this would be, um, like, sorry, this is supposed to be a comma, and I was thinking of Lir when I was writing it. So if you wanted to say to, literally to the extent that, you use hal, whatever verb here, 정도로. Literally, 정도 means extent. So literally, more, really literally, to the extent that something. And that, yeah, that's the same meaning if you want to use it like that. But like I said, it's got a more literal meaning and you're not going to use it as much. But you'll see it. You'll see from time to time. Like, um, it was... Um, so, the, like, the winds were so fierce that day to the extent that they covered, uh, that they were blowing the mountainside or something like that. I, I'm, I'm bad at thinking of example sentences off the spot, but you get what I'm trying to say. 정도로 would be the literal word for extent that. And that would be another grammar. That would be an advanced grammar form, so maybe for another time. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Korea's national anthem. 동해 물과... <laughs> 동해물, 동해 means East Sea, so that's the, uh, or you'd see it on maps as either Sea of Japan or East Sea. East Sea, 물, water, 동해물과, and, um, 동해물과 백두산. 백두산, 백두산 is one of the mountains, uh, kind of, I think now it's like over in part of North Korea as well. Uh, it's just an old mountain in Korea that has a lot of history. Pekdusan E, sorry, I should have connected that. Pekdusan E, Barugo. So, Barugo <clears throat> means to dry, to be dry. And Pat, wait, no, that, I wrote that wrong. Pat, Toro, which due to sound change rule, this will be pronounced as Tal Toro. Tal To. Ro, due to sound change rules. You probably heard this before. Um, I'm not going to write the whole thing. You can find it on the internet. Uh, literally, tata means to wear out. Like something gets really old and, wor and worn out. But if you say the pektusani tatoro, so so much that pektusan, mount pektu wears down, you know, like the mountain disappears, kind of like that, forever, is the idea, is trying to convey, never. And then the, the waters in the East Sea, maruda, dry out. So waters dry out in the East Sea and the mountain range is, you know, wears down to nothing. So it's kind of saying like forever, like as long as there's water in the East Sea and Pekdusan is still in the air, kind of like that. Uh, you can find it. Uh, it's that whole, like, uh, the Korea's uh, patriotic song that every Korean in the world knows. But yeah, that's also using the same thing. So much that 
the waters dry up and the mountain is worn out. And then at the end they say, Hananimi Pou Hasa. So like, may God protect us. Uri Nara Manse. So Korea, 10,000 years to Korea, you know, basically, long live Korea. Or, uh, you know, may God protect and assist Korea so much that, to the extent that, or this is actually a really good use of the translation until. Until. So much that, you know, to, as, as before we had Chukdoro, to death. I love him to death. Well, now it's to the destruction of the mountain and the water's all drying out. So it's like, until that happens, you know, bless Korea. Kind of that type of patriotic song. Anyway, I'm not going to sing anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to break my new microphone. Okay. Maybe if you're Korean, you're watching, maybe you feel like all patriotic right now. Good. Okay. Let's do, let's do the next form. Any Koreans watching right now? English learning videos? No, I do not teach. I do not teach English only as a hobby. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the next form for today, the second form that we're going to go over, and that is <clears> torokada. <throat> this is the same conjugation. You take you take a verb stem and attach toro, but then you follow it with the verb hada. The literal meaning of this is the same as ke, remember? So if you know ke hada, you already know torokada, with an exception. So you can say torokada in the same way that you can say ke hada, so you, as in to make and to let. So we're not going to go over that again today because that's a whole lesson in itself, but it can be used in the same way. So like, as we gave the example before, you can say chongso hage hesoyo. I made someone do cleaning or I let someone do cleaning, depending on the context. If it's something good, it's probably let. Or, Chongso Hadoro Hesoyo. I did it or I made it so that, so that something happens. So, this can both, both of these can be used to mean make and let in that way. However, this has one additional meaning. Toro Kada is a formal form, can also be used as a formal form when used with the present tense, I would say uh, future tense, just to be more specific, typically with the future tense, doesn't have to be, typically with the future tense, I'll say that, and it's slightly formal, and it's used to say something like, I will take care of it, Or I'll make sure is probably even better. I'll make sure to. Or you make sure to. So make sure to is a really good way to translate this form. If you say, Hadoro hagesimida. Hadoro hagesimida. Literally, what you were saying is, I will do something so that I do something or someone does something. It's the same thing as make and let, but or so that. But it's used also to say, I'll make sure to do something. So it's a formal way of saying, all right, well, let's, I'm going to take care of this now. I'm going to do something. I'm going to make sure to do something. Just an announcement. Hopefully you can read that. It says announcement. Just a way to announce that you're going to do something. So this is a style of speaking used when announcing something that you are going to do to say that you're going to make sure to do something or that you'll take care of something. Or if you tell someone, Hey, you make sure to do something in, in a slightly formal way. Make sure to do something like that. I'm going to erase this because I want to give you your example sentence. Wow, these, I think then the other erasers that I got are like much better than these. These don't even last one day. <laughs> okay. 
Um, just as I said really quick, since this is the same as Kehada, you could say something like this. So, hey, Chuseo, please, ke, ke hada, to let or to make. So, please let me do it. Please let me be able to do it. Please let me do it. Or, you could also say, It's the exact same meaning. Please let me do it. However, if you use it like this, it's slightly more formal. Okay, that was just what I wanted to show you as how it's the same as K. Okay, let's do a sentence with this torokada form. This is maybe the most common place that you'll see this. The most common type of sentence you'll see torokada with. At the beginning of a meeting, you'll hear people say this all the time. This will be like, the default phrase that people will say before starting a meeting. All right, we'll get started. You know, you might, might hear this at a wedding ceremony. Um, yeah, so 시작하도록 하겠습니다. Literally, I will make it so that I start. And they might say like 지금, 지금부터 시작하도록 하겠습니다. Like, I'll, I will make it so that I will start right now. But you can translate this more as like, I'm going to start right now. I'm going to start, everyone. I'm announcing it formally. I'm going to start, you know, or I'll make sure. I'm going to make sure to start right now. 시작하도록 하겠습니다. All right, then. Well, let's get started is my, how you might say this in an English, you know, a speech in English. You know, you go to the, go up to the front of it, the desk and everyone's there. You're like, okay, all right, everyone, let's get started then. You know, kind of like that, like that type of announcement. 시작하도록 하겠습니다. I'm going to get started then. All right, everyone, just announcing, letting you all know, I'm going to make sure to get started. Like that. And then you proceed to waste everyone's time for the whole duration of the meeting because meetings are terrible. Okay, the next thing we got is. Okay, 오늘부터. 오늘부터, literally today, from. From today, 더, more, 열심히. 열심하다. Means to be diligent. So, yarsim he diligently, or more naturally, we just say hard. As in, like, I'll work hard, I'll work harder. Paul yarsimi, harder. Kenyan, if you just say, sorry, I keep switching to explaining things in Korean. So, you would yarsimi would just be hard, like hard from now. I'll work hard from now. Yarsimi, year. So, work hadorok. Year hadorok. Harkeo. Another future form, geo, I will, so that, literally, I work harder from today. I will make sure to work harder from today, or just announcing, I'm going to work harder from today. 오늘부터 더 열심히 일하도록 할게요. I'm going to work harder from today. That's how you would announce something. Slightly formal. Yeah. 오늘부터 더 열심히 일하도록 할게요. I will work harder from today. Okay, this, this erasure is just terrible. I, I don't know why the other one I had worked better. <laughs> I'll, I'll just get one of those out later. Okay. Uh, I can't believe I'm so far behind on the time. This doesn't make any sense. Neil. I think it's just because this, this, exa this lesson, I put a lot of example sentences on. Neil Xiong. A. 좋은 점수. 점수 means score, like a grade. 점수를 받을 수 있도록 again. 받을 수 있도록 바로를 잘. Oops. So first, here we have the original total that we already know. In order to, or so that, I can get 좋은 점수, a good score, 내일 시험에. On tomorrow's test, 좋은 점수를 받을 수 있도록. So that I can get a good score on tomorrow's test, 
This is the first usage of Toro, but now we have the second usage that we're also going to be doing with Toro Kada. Tano re. Tai. So, vocabulary. Tano. Tai. Well. Weu Toro. Weu da means to memorize. Weu da. To memorize. So, Weu Toro. Haseyo. So, Weu Toro Kada. To make sure to memorize. Weu da. Make sure to memorize well, Tai, just doing something well, doing a good, a good job of it. So make sure to do a good job of memor memorizing. So make sure to do a good job of memorizing your vocabulary so that you can get a good score on tomorrow's test. Make sure to memorize your vocabulary well so that you'll get a good score tomorrow's test. Kind of like that. 내일 시험에 좋은 점수를 받을 수 있도록 단어를 잘 외우도록 하세요. Sounds good. Now we've got two uses of toro. 할수 있도록. Here, 받을 수 있도록. In order to get. 외우도록 하다. I will make sure to. Well, here it's 하세요, so command. Make sure to. So there we go. And they're, they're different. You got two toroks in the same sentence. I wanted to give you guys an example of multiple toroks in the same sentence. This, this racer is just like spreading everything around. <laughs> I just want to throw it away. I just opened it. Seriously, right when I clicked, right, right, like five minutes before I clicked go live, I opened this eraser. It's brand new. And all it does is just smear the ink all over the board. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, I want to do one more sentence, but I'm going to skip that because, so there's one extra sentence on the outline that we didn't do because I want to go to our next thing. Okay. If we have extra time, I'll, I'll go back into it. Okay, 58. All right. Um, torok and Hada. Both Torok and Hada. Sorry. Torok and Wihe. Both of these can mean in order to. But they're different. Um, first of all, Torok Hada, like Hadorok Hada, as, oppo in a, uh, as opposed to Hagi Wihe, in order to do something, Torok has more of the, a meaning of making sure to do something. So as I said with our example, hagesimida, I will make sure to do something. You, you wouldn't say hagi wie hagesimida anyway. You cannot make that sort of wihe hada form to mean making sure to do something. So that's one difference. Toro can be used to say making sure to do something. So hadorok hada. You cannot even make wihe hada, hagi wihe hada in Korean. It would have a different meaning. That just means to do something in order to do something, literally. Uh, that's the other difference is that wihe or hagi wihe, you know, I'll, I'll put here, ki wihe, is more literal sounding. So if you were to say, hal su itorok, you're kind of saying, so that I can, to make sure that I can. Even You can even think of this as meaning to make sure so that, but literally, let's just take a look at that. So in order to, or so that, I can 한국어를 배울 수 있도록. In order for me to learn Korean, 한국어를 배우기 위해 is more direct, literal translation of in order for me to learn Korean. Whereas 할수 있도록, 배울 수 있도록, that's like so that I can learn Korean. It means the same thing, but it has a different feeling to it. 위해 has a much more literal feeling to it. If you're going to be using them in the same sort of situation, Torok also, like I said, has the feeling of you're making sure to do something, or even you're commanding someone to do something. So if you use Torok with some sort of sentence that you're telling them to do, it's kind of like you're telling them like, hey, do this, like make sure to do this. Whereas if you say, we hey, you're not giving any sort of command, you're not telling them to make sure of anything, like to do it well. You're not saying any of that. You're All you're saying is directly in order to. In order to, you know, it's much more literal sounding. Um, because of that, kiwihe is not really that. Kiwihe is less common than torok. I'll say that. Kiwihe is less common than torok because it has much more literal feeling to it. But the advantage of wihe is that you can use it anywhere. Literally anywhere that it, it can literally translate as in order to, you can use so it's very useful for that. 
Torok, however, you can't just use, throw it everywhere, right? It has to be used to mean um, so that uh, it can also have the different meanings depending on how you're using it, whether you're using it with a verb like chuktorok or pajitorok or torokada, like that. But yeah, just kind of keep that in your mind. The main difference is this one kind of has more of a feeling of like making sure to do something, like something that you really want. Like you're making sure to do it, putting effort into it, trying. Whereas kiwihe is just in order to. Also, there is a slight difference. Um, sometimes you cannot use one or the other. We already said that you cannot use wihe hada to mean to make sure of or anything like that. You can't say like hagi wihe hagesumida. Shijak hagi wihe hagesumida. Doesn't make any sense. You can't you can't do that. Um, so only this one has torokada usage. Also, there are some situations where uh, it would just be incorrect. Let me give you an example. Okay. Hangu border. Peudorok. Hangu border peudorok. Oops. Musen. Check. So, what book? What books? Check the soil. This is wrong. I'm letting you know this sentence is wrong. Sentence is wrong. Do not learn this sentence. Hangu border peudorok. So that you learn Korean. Musen check the soil. What books do you use so that you learn Korean? It sounds awkward in Korean as well as in English. What books do you use so that you learn Korean in order to learn Korean? You want to say in order to learn Korean, what books do you what books do you use in order to learn Korean? But what you're actually saying is something that sounds like what I just said. So that you learn Korean, what books do you use? Um, it, it sounds very awkward. What you want to say instead, because this, like I said, this would be like, so that you learn Korean. You could change the sentence to use torok if you wanted to, but you wouldn't be able to use it in its current form. Hangoro peudoro. So that you learn Korean. You could say, I used a book. Like, I used this book. Like, yi chek, yi chegger, so soyo. Hangoro peudoro, yi chegger, so soyo. It's fine. But you would not be able to say, so that you learn Korean, what books did you use? It doesn't quite mean, it doesn't mean in order to in every situation. It's only in order to when you're saying something that you already did. Like I did that in order to, but not what do you use in order to do something like that. Um, so for this one though, it'll help to think about the translation more than just look at the Korean to understand why this sentence sounds awkward in Korean. What you wanna say instead, peugi <laughs> wihe. Literally, in order to learn Korean, what books do you use? What books do you use in order to learn Korean? You can ask this question a few other different ways. I'm just comparing with Torok and Wihe. What books do you use in order to learn Korean? Because he Wihe is more is a more literal in order to. What do you do? In order to do something. Whereas Torok is more like, you know. Making sure to do something so that you do something, or even to the extent that you do something. Um, to the extent that you learn Korean, what books do you use? So that you learn Korean. It's more like so that is like so much that. So you so much that you learn Korean, what books do you use? Like it doesn't quite make sense in Korean. But um, I'll leave it to you to think about that a little bit more in the Korean translation. So uh, if that sounds a bit confusing, which it might be, if you're kind of wondering, well, why can't I say like, so that I learned Korean? Think of it a little bit more, so much that, and see how it doesn't quite make sense. Or um, anyway, so that, that's the basic difference though between these two. But the main difference, I would say, if you only memorize one thing from this part, is just to know that kiwihe is much more literal and therefore can be used anywhere that you want to say in order to. Okay, uh, also, okay, I already did that. Oh yeah, and if both of them can be used, so if you've got torok and it can be used and you've got wihe and they both can be used, um, which is in a lot of cases, you can, you can use either one. Of those two, wihe will also be slightly more, 
slightly more formal sounding because it's literal. I shouldn't say formal, I'll say it sounds more literal. And because it sounds more literal, that can have the meaning of, that also can sound like it's a bit more formal. So keep that in mind. Because we hey is much more literal sounding, literal sounding words tend to have more of a bookish feel, a more, a little bit more of a formal feeling to them. So just so you know. However, um, more common than we hey, if you're wondering, is just the regular uh, form. So intending, and I have a full live stream about that, so I'm not gonna go into this today. Intending is more often used than we hey. So we hey is fine, but we hey is totally literal. So because of that, more people will just use ryogo, ryogo, ha ryogo, ha ryogo, mogu ryogo. So I have a full live stream about how you can do this as, as well as how to use we hey. You can find it in my, uh, in my community tab on my channel. Okay, are we back on the time? Okay, yes, I think we're back on time. Woo! <clears throat> Although to be fair, I did skip two sentences. <laughs> so if you get the outline, there will be uh, two sentences we didn't do today for, for lack of time. Okay, and, um, or maybe we can go back and do them afterward. We'll see, okay. The, the last thing I wanted to talk about, maybe I'll go back and do some more sentences, is toro. Now, you might have seen torok and thought, what is torok? I've seen torok, really? Well, torok is actually the same thing as torok. They're equal. However, when you attach torok to a noun, <clears throat> it becomes toro. That is the difference. So you might be thinking, oh, okay, well, I'll just stick torok and a bunch of nouns. Wait a second, what does that even mean? Um, to keep things simple, I'll give you a I'll give you a pro tip. Do not stick torok onto nouns by yourself. This is the easiest tip I can give you. The reason is torok is only used on specific nouns that already are commonly used with torok. So you don't really need to learn what nouns you can stick torok on and which nouns you can't. But I will tell you a few of the most common examples. Uh, one that you'll see in songs. Young one, young one, I wrote that right, yeah. Suddenly when I looked at it, I'm like, did I write that right? Yeah, <laughs> young one, toro. Young one means eternal. You know, they say young one, ki, young one ni sarangake yo. I love you, young one ni sarangake, I love you forever. Kind of like that. Young one, toro. Until, until young one, forever, eternal. To the ex literally though, young one is eternal. So it's you're literally saying to the extent of eternity, until forever. Young one toro. You'll see some songs where they'll sing young one toro or whatever like that. Something something toro. It's just until something or to the extent of something. And it'll be after whatever they want to emphasize that with. So young one toro is a common word you'll see. Other ones that you'll also find are, um, yeah, young one toro no sarangake. I'll love you forever. Uh, like saying forever is the extent of how much I love you. But after forever, you know, all bets are off. So another common place you'll see it is at, you'll also see it as e, as in this e toro, or ku toro, for example. Now these are also one, these are just one word. E torok, ku torok. This means it's kind of like saying the same thing as iroke gaji. Iroke gaji. Or kuroke kuroke gaji. Kuroke gaji and iroke gaji. That's the li that's the literal meaning of these. It has the exact same exact same meaning. These are the exact same meaning as just saying iroke gaji and kuroke gaji. I toro and ku toro. Um, this means this much, even this much, iroke gaji, even this much. Gaji meaning even, like emphasizing up to this point, even this much, and even that much, kuroke gaji. Um, like this much, like this, like this much, like that much. You might not see like translates, I'll just put this in parentheses too. This much, like this, this much, or that much. Um, so yeah, that's all for <clears throat> Toro. 
Um, yes, okay, we did finish a bit early. So because we finished early, I do want to give you the other two sentences I didn't give you. I cut them out because I, I wanted to make sure we, we have time for a short Q&A. Uh, one extra sentence, okay. <coughs> 이 생선은 맛있고 this fish tastes good and 몸에 to the body 몸에도 좋으니까 oops 몸에도 좋으니까 because it is good for your body too and tastes good so this fish tastes good and is also to the body good because of that because it's good 그러니까 많이 먹도록 해요. 해요. Okay. 많이 먹도록. 먹다. To eat a lot. 많이 먹다. 먹도록 해요. Make sure to eat a lot. You know, go ahead, eat a lot. Make sure to eat a lot. I'm commanding you. Make sure to eat a lot. 먹도록 하다. 도록 하다. 먹도록 해. 많이 먹도록 해요. 이 생선은, this fish, 맛있고, tastes good, and 몸에도 좋으니까, because it is also good for your body. 몸, body. 많이 먹도록 해요. Make sure to eat a lot. This fish tastes good and it's also good for your body, so make sure to eat a lot. Because this fish tastes good and is also good for you, eat a lot. 이 생선은 맛있고 몸에도 좋으니까 많이 먹도록 해요. All right, that's the other sentence I wanted to do. And one more. Uh, oh yeah. So now we have in order to or so that you can become 되다, a Korean teacher. 한국어 선생님이 될수 있도록 in order to become a Korean teacher or so that you can become a Korean teacher or someone can 대학 대학원 대학원 would be like a uh, graduate school. 대학원을 다니기 시작했어요. I started attending 다니다 to attend or to go to. 대학원을 다니기 시작했어요. I started attending graduate school. 한국어 선생님이 될수 있도록. So that I can 될수 있다. Be can can become. So that I can become a Korean teacher. Teacher. Sorry. So that I can become a Korean teacher. 한국어 선생님이 될수 있도록 대학원을 다니기 시작했어요. So that I can become a Korean teacher, I started attending graduate school. Or, I started attending graduate school so that I can become a Korean teacher. 한국어 선생님이 될수 있도록 대학원을 다니기 시작했어요. Okay, that's the other sentence I wanted to give you. But I wanted to say, you can also say, here we have 될수 있도록. You could also just say, 되기 위해. Or 되기 위해서, since so is optional. 한국어 선생님이 되기 위해서 대학원을 다니기 시작했어요. And that's totally fine. Exact same meaning, just slightly different nuance. 한국어 선생님이 되기 위해서. In order to become a Korean teacher. 대학원을 다니기 시작했어요. I started attending graduate school in order to become a Korean teacher. Perfectly fine too. If you have to compare, 되기 위해서 would be slightly more literal, so therefore slightly more formal. And 될수 있도록 is kind of like so I can make sure if you have to compare it like that. It's kind of like so I can so I can really do something. You know, I'm really trying to do something. I'm purposefully trying to do something. 될수 있도록 so that I can become a Korean teacher. Whereas 되기 위해서 is just in order to become a Korean teacher in general. So yeah, both of them are totally fine though. You can pick either one. Okay, that's the last sentence. Woo, we got through all the sentences. Um, I want you guys to do something though. So we're not done, but we are done, but we're not, but we are. The lesson's over. But um, <laughs> I'm gonna do a Q&A in a bit, but before we do a q and I'll do a Q&A for like 20 minutes. I want you guys to make a sentence using torok. You can use torok to mean so that, to the extent that, although I recommend keeping the meaning to mean so that, that's the more common one, or torokada, make one sentence using torok or torokada, and I'm gonna check them out in the chat for just a few minutes. 
If you have to go, today's lesson is finished. I will have a few announcements and I'll do a short Q&A for any Korean questions after as well. Yeah, this time, this time I did a lot of example sentences because um, I, I always write a lot of example sentences and then what I do is I trim it down to how many I think are necessary to understand each usage. But this time I was like, you know, Turok is something you got to learn by seeing it a lot. So I added an, I kept some more in than I normally do. Ah, Tiffany, stay my day. You want to say to? To? Not to. To, chun, mosubi. Mosub, er, probably. But it depends, unless they said mosubi. So that, you, so that we look better, so that we appear better, so that we can really show ourselves to you. Yep, it's the same thing. But there it's not torokada. There it's not the torokada form, just so you know, in case you're wondering. Uh, there it's yorshimi hagesimida. It's like we're going to work harder so that we can really show you our best, give you our best, kind of like that meaning. But yeah, same same form, toro, so that, literally so that, but also toro kada, you know, to make sure to do something. But yeah, so that one, you can look at it either way, whether it's just so that, like in order to do it, we're going to, to yoshimi hagesimida, we're going to work harder, we're going to do things harder, or you can think of it, think of it as like the announcement form, toro kagesimida, kind of like that, with to yoshimi added in. Michi dorok, stray kids. <laughs> I'm listening to Stray Kids so much that I'm going crazy. <laughs> Charsu is here. Yeah, I see Charsu here. Kim Charsu, although I doubt that's his real name. Uh, it's like I said, Kim Charsu is just a common, uh, like an old, old fashioned Korean name. It'd be like John Doe, kind of like that, you know, really common, but naturally no one has the name anymore so much. You might want to say, um, You're not just saying, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna sleep now so that I wake up early. Then that's assuming that you'll wake up naturally just by yourself if you go to bed now. It could be that. To make it more clear though, I'd recommend adding su ita. So, uh, So that I can wake up early tomorrow, not just so that I will wake up early tomorrow. But you could say, you know, so that I'll wake up early tomorrow. I'm going to go to bed now so that I will wake up early tomorrow. You could, but usually you might want to say so that I can wake up early tomorrow, or maybe I can eat, I can wake up even earlier or something like that. That's why it tends to get used with suita since it's talking about in order to. So, okay, I have to do a lot of review so that I can learn I can um, remember new vocabulary well. Torok is a force of nature. Billy is stay confirmed. Who is a stay a stay for stay for who? I don't I don't listen to much K-pop, so I'm not really a stay or a stan or whatever. Although I do, I, I will say, I will say I um, I I liked meeting Purple Beck. A few months ago, that was like really a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, the Korean word came first this time. Re uh, it was a shocking. It was really uh, surprising and uh, um, Okay, it was a, uh, oh, I can't remember the word. Okay, it was a big deal. That's what I want to say. It was a big deal for me to get to meet a real K-pop group. So uh, they're still performing in Korea. So I totally want to see if, if I can meet them for another video. Yeah, keep going going ahead, keep making uh, some of your own sentences. Okay, none of your business. First of all, you uh, for date, you say date with hago, like 사람 kwa or hago or irang, like that. In order to go on a date, and kunyo is not really used, ku and kunyo. Ku and kunyo for him and her, these are not used in Korean. These are not actually used it's outside of example sentences in Korean textbooks, like translating for English. These are not actually used. So whatever lesson told you that these are good was lying. These are not used in Korean. 
But it depends. It could have been like a, it could just be like an example, like a textbook example sentence. It's okay, but they're not actually spoken. So you'll see them in example sentences, totally fine. But when you're making your own sentences, don't actually use them. Uh, I'm not quite sure that none of your business you said in order to go on a date and then you said, like you're trying to say he was really nice. Uh, you would say he acted really nice, not he was nice in order to go on a date. Because in English, we just say to be nice. And that means someone is nice and someone acts nice. But in Korean, you can't just say to be nice as to meaning to act nice. You'd have to say to act nice. You'd have to do a different verb. I saw your post on it for Twitter. Yeah, it left a big impression. Thank you, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking in Korean, you don't actually forget English if you're speaking Korean. You just simply forget English because you forget English like normal. <laughs> it's not like speaking Korean makes you forget your English or something like that. Um, no, it's just you forget English normally because you forget English. Just like you have brain, fart, brain farts without speaking a foreign language. It's just like that. But in Korean, I just so happen to think of the Korean one, 감동적이다. 감동 is like emotions and 감동적 is like emotional. But it doesn't mean like emotional like you're crying, like that'll be 감정, 감정적이다. 감동 is like impression, like you know, you got a really strong feeling from it. So yeah, that's what you would say is uh, it left a big impression is what you would say. 정말 감동적이었어. It was, it left a really big impression on me is what you'd say in Korean. 한국에 갈수 있도록, Noah Deeps as well. So that I go to Korea on that day. Not so that I go, but so that I can go to Korea on that day, is what you want to say. I'm studying Korean every day, all day. Okay, and also you wrote, so it's just a typo. David, can you tell me how to say my name is Degs? Uh, you can just say, I am Degs. Is simple. Um, I'm guessing if you don't know how to write the alphabet, I'm not sure how I can tell you. Uh, and then 만나서 반갑습니다. Or just 반갑습니다. It's even easier. 반갑습니다. 저는 대기즈입니다. 반갑습니다. Nice to meet you. 충분히 푹. No, 푹 would be uh, for sleep. <clears throat> 푹 is an adverb used to say something is <clears throat> like tight. Like sleep tight. Like that. Let me get the literal translation for you. Hold on. My favorite is uh, Neighbor Dictionary. It's got full literal translation type of thing. Uh, Kimike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deep is the literal translation of it. Uh, it also lists, but but you the only place you'll really see puk is with tada, like to take a rest or to sleep. So puk is like to sleep um, deeply is the literal meaning. So you're saying deep sleep, or in English we'd say sleep tight. But no, it cannot be interchanged. Tumbuni would be enough, sub sufficiently. Okay, El Planet Nights. I don't want to listen to BTS so much that I hate it. Okay. Nice. Yeah, small. Perfect. What small wrote. My name is Tegs. Nice to meet you. It's like the image of wrapping up. No, it's not the image of wrapping up in a blanket. It's the image of something being deep. Like very deep. And uh, fulfilling could also be, but it's specifically just with sleep, it's fulfilling. Uh, it's, it's just more like deep and strong. I should add that in. Strong and deep. But yeah, it's kind of difficult to explain because it's only used in a few situations. It's not a like a regular adverb that you need to learn separately. Just memorize the phrase, puk tada, to sleep tight. And that's it. Tengir, kamok turok, chipjungage kungwesoyo. I studied, <clears throat> I focused and studied, I studied intently to the extent that I forgot my birthday. Is that possible? <laughs> just so that I look smarter. I mean, so I look um, healthier, sorry. Just so I look healthier, uh, I cut my hair. I don't quite understand. If, I guess if your hair's like all, if you have like dreadlocks, and it's like going everywhere, they're like really messy, like knots everywhere, then I guess, yeah, you could cut your hair to look more healthy. Okay. Okay, I can't, I can't, can't get tired of. 
Do you think there could be any Korean people that don't know how to read the alphabet? Um, it would be less than 1%, but yes, some Koreans can, are completely illiterate. Um, whether from, you know, they had a terror, maybe they grew up in abusive households or lived in extreme poverty. Like, you know, maybe they lived in the countryside and maybe they were abandoned or they just lived so far away from the city. They didn't even go to school. Could be. Um, yeah, but other than that, everyone in Korea knows Hangul, even if they're not perfect at it, you know, people make spelling mistakes all the time, um, especially older people just due to education levels in Korea, how those are changing. But yeah, it's possible. It's just you're not likely to encounter anyone in Korea who can't read and write Hangul. Tarsushi, yes. I very famous Kim Tarsu. Kim Tarsu, that's not your real name though. Why did you pick Kim Tarsu? Do you like Kim Tarsu and uh, Yongi? Yeah, the reason is, Kim Chosu, the reason is uh, every time I put, every time I need a name for an example sentence, I always use Chosu or Yongi. So that's why. <clears throat> that is name. I, do you recommend any books or websites for beginners? <clears throat> um, I have a series of books. I'm biased because I wrote them. So... I'll just show you real quick. I have a series of books. I have Korean Made Simple. Uh, it's on Amazon and my website. Also, if you don't want to pay money, uh, Talk To Me in Korean has some really good free lessons. But there's a lot of really good free lessons these days, so it just depends how you like to learn. Like, if you like learning, if you like basic, basic free lessons, Talk To Me in Korean. If you want, like, really in-depth, detailed lessons, there are some other websites, other books that you can get. Um, mine is kind of like in between. Mine's like basic lessons with detailed explanations. So it's just what's your learning style, you know? Uh, find something for your learning style. But I'm I'm gonna do a video later about my uh, some book recommendations as well as uh, I, I'm gonna do another one for YouTube recommendations and then another one for app recommendations coming up. Okay, I think I don't think anyone's making any more examples. Okay, quick announcements then. Again, remember that the worksheets for this lesson is already on Patreon, so you can download that right now. There are like 10 questions with more sentences that you can practice. As well as the outline for today's lesson with all of the sentences that we did will also be on Patreon within about an hour. Uh, if you want any updates, make sure to join the Discord channel. Again, thank you to our um, donations and thank you to everyone for coming. So just again, Poya S, Gabriella, our new member, Vexil, which I can't pronounce. <laughs> uh, Dizzy Punch Gaming as well for your donations. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> I'm going to do a Q&A now for about 10 minutes. So feel free to ask any Korean questions you have. If you don't have any other Korean questions, you're free to go. Lesson's all over. <laughs> but yeah, if you have any Korean question, Korean related questions, feel free to ask it right now. Or actually any question is okay, but I'd encourage Korean because you can ask me regular questions anytime in the Discord. Yeah, hopefully... Uh, how do you guys feel about using Torok? Does that feel okay now? That's really all that matters is, do you feel like you got it? Do you feel like it kind of makes sense? Like something clicked, you know, you might not be a master at it, but did you feel like, okay, I kind of get it. Then, then that's good. That, that's what I want. Do you prefer a left or a right dab? Definitely a right. Well, it's my right here. It probably shows up as your left though. Cause the mirror, the video switches. You have to have, um, oh, again, Leticia, perfect, almost perfect sentence. You want to do 일할 열심히 일할 수 있도록, so that you can work hard. Not so that you work hard. Not so that you do work hard, but so that you can work hard. So that you can keep working hard is kind of what you want to, is what you want to say. You could say 계속, continually. 계속 일할 수 있도록, so that you can keep working hard, kind of like that. Uh, but yeah, you'd want to use 수, 수 있다 form with that as well. But other than that, yeah, okay. You said I should use act nice. <clears throat> 굴다 would be used for negative things, typically, 굴다. Like to treat someone often used with negative forms. Um, 착해야, 착하다? Yeah, 착해야, 착해야 된다. Wouldn't really use it that. Yeah, kurda, like you might have seen, uh, kurda. Let me just find the literal 
again, the literal translation for kvuda would be kind of like treating or acting. Um, Yeah, uh, you can find it for Hindu Hana. I would just say, typically you do some things like, <clears throat> like you could do, te technically you could do Chakage Hindu Hada to act nice, literally, though they wouldn't really do that too much. Chakage Mae Hada is, is fairly common to speak kindly, like to speak nice. Um, hold on, let's see. Sorry, I'm just rereading this again here. Torok is really versatile. Oh, hold on, let me go back up. But yeah, kurda wouldn't really be used with that type of stuff. You don't really need to use kurda as much as you might think. It's usually used with like negative things more often. Like treating someone a certain way. Treating someone like that, like a negative way. Our wedding anniversaries. <clears throat> ah, they use um, Sino Korean numbers. That would be Junyan, is how you say like the anniversary. Literally, chu is, is used for a, uh, it makes the number an ordinal number, like first, second, third. It's kind of like a, uh, a Sino Korean word for that, and yun just for year. So the first year, so iljunyan, iljunyan is one year. Uh, Ijunyan would be second, two year anniversary. Maybe I could do a lesson on that, like, act nice, act mean, you know, he was mean to her, he was nice, like that type of stuff. It's not quite as straightforward as I, as I wish for, for uh, quickly explaining, explaining it here. Okay, do I need to know Korean to get any job in South Korea? In, if you want to be an English teacher, no. You don't need to have any sort of special degree. You just need a regular bachelor's degree to teach English and Korean. Unless you have a, a visa from a company or you have some special connection, in which case, yeah, you can go over and just, you know, do English teaching or uh, study Korean like that. So missing, making sure reading here. But if you have a, if you have a, if you have any bachelor degree already, you said you have a CS computer science bachelor degree, you can already go to Korea right now and teach English. But to do a different job, no, you can't do a different job in Korea unless you have connections or you're already living in Korea. So um, that's not quite a feasible thing. Just Teaching English is pretty much all there is unless you have a special, unless you're working for a company that has a branch in Korea or you're already living in Korea. But still, even people who live in Korea, it's hard to do other jobs than just teaching English because there's really not that many jobs there they would want to hire a non-Korean for when they could just hire a Korean and pay them less. I still need to practice more. Yeah, Noah Deeps, it, it is. Just keep practicing. Um, when in doubt, make it into suita. That'll help a lot. Can we really ask you Korean questions on Discord? You can. I won't answer all the time if I'm not there. But if I'm there, I, I am on Discord a lot. Yeah, I usually try to help out. 정도 만큼. No, 만큼 is different. I did a separate lesson all about 만큼, I believe. You would have to check out the Google Doc. Let me know if I'm wrong and I didn't do a lesson on it. I think I already did. Um, 만큼 is, the, is showing how much something is. Of something like not just so much that but it's like how much like the the quantity of something that's the different meaning whereas torok is more extent like the limit of something how high how far like that whereas mankum is the amount of something and it has different usage and uh, different grammar the way that it works uh, it's not it's fine though if you're thinking that they're kind of similar because yeah you're not you're not too far off the mark but they have different ways that they're used <laughs> 원어민이랑 많이 소통해 소통해 봤어요. Nice, nice say, say, say. I don't know how to say your name. Uh, in order to speak Korean more naturally, 원어민이랑 with a native 많이 소통해 봤어요. I've tried. I did a lot of conversation. I tried conversing a lot with natives in order to be able to speak Korean more naturally. Very nice sentence. Uh, say, say, TSE. <laughs> 파란색 be used to show sadness, like it can in English. Meant sense as just blue. Uh, show me the lyric, Sam Kashi. I actually just did a lesson. I just finished making a new lesson about colors, which will be uploaded on Friday, this next week, Friday. So you'll, it doesn't cover that type of usage for colors, but it is on regular colors. 
Tongdu, basically literally extent. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> and that, yes, that would be more of an advanced topic. Not a lot more advanced than today, but it would be the next level. <clears throat> because in order to use the sentence that literally means to the extent that, you're going to have a much more complicated sentence to match that kind of literal feeling of Cheongdo when you're used in, using it in that way. And I worry that if I did a lesson about Cheongdo, I would get a lot of beginners that want to learn about the beginning usage of Cheongdo when I've already taught that before. Uh, but I didn't, yet, I didn't yet teach Cheongdo as to the extent that. But it's not really like I said, it's not really a whole lesson worth of material. It would be like a really quick advanced topic. Okay. Difficult to use prepositions with verbs. Uh, can you give me an example? I want to work in Korea, but I don't want to teach English. Yeah, you have to live in Korea then. <laughs> live in Korea and um, you could work at a startup. Startups will hire people who speak English, um, but you don't have to teach English. So they'll hire you for a regular job because you speak English. They'll pay you okay. It won't be good pay, but they'll pay you enough to survive. Uh, maybe similar to an English teacher or a little bit less. Um, but that's an opportunity to do work that's not an English teacher in Korea is at a startup. But you have to already be living in Korea because they're not going to want to pay for your visa application, which is really expensive for them. So if you're already living in Korea, which you can do by being married to a Korean, <clears throat> um, that's pretty much the only way to do it. Otherwise, English teacher and that's it. Do I need to be an English native? Yes, you would have to speak English natively um they do hire some people who aren't natives but who speak it completely fluently that's possible but native is the is the way to go how long did it take you to perfectly distinguish oh yeah see check out my video i did a i did a really detailed video live stream um and a korean faq video about how to use those markers so check that out Maybe check out just the Korean FAQ video. I think that's my best video, which explains those markers. But yeah, I, I, I think it was years. Like even after I could speak Korean fine, I still had a lot of trouble with it for a few years. So maybe let's just say, say six years of studying Korean before I really felt like I had a good hand, good grasp on those. But I also didn't have anyone to explain it to me. Like I didn't quite understand it. And then finally it clicked. I'm like, oh, I see. But, you know, I think, I think a lot of it is, um, was the materials I had available to me at the time. There wasn't anything that explained it in much detail. So I had to figure it out by myself. And that's why it took so long. I don't think it would take someone six years to learn it these days. I think you could probably get a really good feeling of how it works within maybe one year or two years. Let's see, what Google Doc? You can find it on the uh, community tab. Every time I make a voting poll, I also post a link to the Google Doc with every lesson I've ever done. Wondering the, that's full. Of, oh, is this, is this for the uh, song lyric? Hold on, let me, let me find it. Maybe they have a, uh, Maybe it's a song I know. Oh, Shuka. Oh, it's a BTS song. It's a BTS song. Oh, okay. Shuka. Oh, it's a BTS song. It's a BTS song. Oh, okay. Um, do, oh, Halsey, Shuga's interlude. Oh, I see, I see what you're talking about because I found the uh, translation for it. And here it says, the translation, A, hey, in my... <laughs> Hey, in my head, so they body so good, that's correct. They body body so so and inside my head or in my mind would probably be better. Paran Zengman Kadakan e Panglang. Um Pang Huang is kind of being lost and wandering around. So wanderings could be a good translation for it. Um feeling lost. Yeah. Feeling lost is probably better. Oh, I dropped it. Can I play? I don't want to play. Okay. Are you still Stuk? 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 <laughs> stuck, stuck on what? 
Oh, yes. We're still stuck here. Of course. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other quick questions? If you have any more questions, please come into the Discord channel. You can ask me questions anytime. And whether if I'm there, I'll answer. If I'm not there, someone else can answer. But yeah, ask questions anytime. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. I don't think I want to play any songs on here. Um, check out the Discord, and I will see you guys again next time. I hope this... I hope this... Um, Cable car will start moving though. Whoa. Oh, I can feel it. The motor's going again, guys. I, th I think it's good. Hold on, let me, let me sit down. I, I have to sit down here. Oh, we're moving. All right, guys, we're moving. Thanks for coming, guys. Wait, we're going up. It's the wrong way. No!